Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> they got him. <laughs> Democracy is dead. The people of Long Island, New York, they went to the polls a year ago and they chose George Anthony of Older Santos to be their representative <laughs> in the United States House of Representatives. And their vote has now been annulled by a kangaroo court of George Santos's supposed peers. And for what? For doing a little bit of lying? Sure. I mean, if that's the standard for expulsion, then I say expel them all. Get out. Next month, we're gonna march down to Capitol Hill and give these crooks a piece of our minds. Saturday, uh, January 6th, 2024, we're gonna give them hell, aren't we boys? Oh, actually, okay, I'm getting word that what George Santos is accused of uh, qualifies as a bit worse than a little bit of lying. Yeah. Sorry, I got a little fired up there. I'm we can so, still do January 6th I'm, if you I'm want. I'm so angry after, after making fun of uh, Republicans for the dog catching the car. We finally caught the car when it comes to George Santos. I never wanted to catch this car. Yeah, th this is the last thing I wanted. <laughs> it's undemocratic. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, he, he the stuff he stands accused of, uh, it, it's, it's pretty bad, actually. It sounds yeah. like this Santos guy's done some crimes. Many, many crimes. Yeah, to be clear, we're... We're joking. I'm not. He, he does look. He was elected to serve. True. True. I'm saying uh, the actions have consequences, but it's undeniable how funny it was having him as a member of Congress. He's a great character. Yeah, you can't deny it. Even his exit, iconic. He gave it. He gave everyone what exactly what they wanted. A fucking diva. The razzle dazzle we've yeah. all been waiting for. Yeah. He showed up. He wore that coat with his arms not in the arm sleeves, like. Royalty. He was uh, he he was serving cunt, as they say, the youth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, here's the Associated Press with what happened on George Santos's final day as a U.S. congressman. Because yeah, he was. It doesn't but, feel real to me. Get out. That's I couldn't believe it when I saw they it. I don't even let him have like a little little time to. They should have had a going away party. Yeah. It's not. It's not right. No. <sighs> but anyways, here's AP. The House voted on Friday to expel Republican Representative George Santos of New York after a blistering ethics report on his conduct heightened lawmakers' concerns about this scandal-plagued freshman. Santos became just the sixth member in the chamber's history to be ousted by colleagues and the third since the Civil War. The vote to expel was 311 to 114, easily clearing the two-thirds majority required. House Republican leaders opposed removing Santos, whose departure leaves them with a razor-thin majority. But in the end, 105 GOP lawmakers sided with nearly all Democrats to expel him. The expulsion marked the final congressional chapter in a spectacular fall from grace for Santos. Celebrated as an up-and-comer after he flipped the district from Democrats last year, Santos' life story began to unravel before he was even sworn into office. Reports emerged that he had lied about having Jewish ancestry, a career at top Wall Street firms, and a college degree, among other things. Then, in May... Santos was indicted by federal prosecutors on multiple charges, turning his presence in the House into a growing distraction and embarrassment to the party. The, I mean, yeah, but like, this man is the least embarrassing thing about the Republican Party. True. If I'm, if I'm being honest, like, oh no, it's a good thing we got rid of this Santos guy, now everyone can take us seriously again. I don't think so, Not buddy. gonna happen. Try again. Also, just, and I know he did a lot of his shenanigans before, being sworn in, obviously. Yeah, those shouldn't even count. But what a year it's been. No one no has one... ever lived a year like George Santos has lived this this year. He went from nobody to somebody, and he flew close to the sun, uh, and and you know what happens when you do that. Yes, you, his you, beautiful wings melted. You, you fall to the earth and die. Uh -huh. Luckily, he's alive, though. Yes, and again, we said it yesterday, I cannot wait to see what he does next. I know, he's got so much time on his hands now. He's gonna be on Dancing with the Stars like that. Well, they, the window of opportunity for George Santos to really do anything post-politics is uh, it took a possibly couple, pretty narrow. It took a couple months to get the uh, the old White House guy in there. What was his name? Uh, the Donald Trump? No, no, no. <laughs> the uh, the uh, White House correspondent guy. The one that was like, yeah, it was the biggest turnout for an inauguration ever. Sean Spicer. Yeah, well, Sean Spicer wasn't facing like 50 fucking felonies. That's what I'm talking about. He has, between now and when he goes to prison, mm. that's when he's got to do all his post-politics stuff. Okay. He, he's very short on time. Well, 
Hopefully he will burn as bright as he did when he was in office. Shine bright like a diamond, Mr. Mm -hmm. Santos. So yeah, I guess third time's a charm for expelling George Santos. Uh, But the other two attempts in May and November were before the House Ethics Committee released their report, which found that Santos had basically used his campaign as a personal piggy bank for buying luxury goods, fancy trips, Botox, and OnlyFans subscriptions and had acquired much of those campaign funds through fraudulent means, all while submitting totally bogus financial disclosures. And on the morning of the vote to expel Santos, it was revealed that even one of his fellow Republican members of Congress had fallen victim to these fraudulent charges. Here's what Congressman Max Miller of Ohio sent to his fellow members before the vote. Colleagues, late yesterday on the floor, I alluded to a personal impact of Representative Santos's conduct. Earlier this year, I learned that the Santos campaign had charged my personal credit card (laughs) and the personal card of my mother (laughs) for contribution amounts that exceeded FEC limits. (laughs) Neither my mother nor I approved these charges or were aware of them. We have spent tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees in the resulting follow-up. I've seen a list of roughly 400 other people to whom the Santos campaign allegedly did this. I believe some other members of this conference might have had the same experience. While I understand and respect the position of those who will vote against the expulsion resolution, my personal experience related to the allegations and findings of the Ethics Committee compels me to vote for the resolution. Since I alluded to this on the floor yesterday, and because of the significance of the question before us, I believe you're entitled to this further explanation for my position. So yeah, he robbed his co-worker and his co-worker's mom. Yeah. And but did they deserve it? Well... This was, uh, <laughs> he he was called out publicly. The clip is in yesterday's video. Yeah, no, and then it, Santos, it, yeah, Santos is like, you wife beater. Yeah, so Max Miller, like Ricky just said, was the one who earlier in the week called George Santos a crook on the House floor, to which Santos responded by bringing up some domestic violence allegations against Miller, which um, if I had domestic violence allegations, I probably wouldn't uh, get on my high horse and uh, call other people unethical, but that's mm-hmm. just me. Yeah. I'd, uh, and, and if I did abuse women, uh, I'd say whoever robbed me, whoever scammed my credit card, uh, well, they were probably in the right. That, I was in the wrong. Karma. I probably deserved that. Yes, mm-hmm. karmically. Anyways, George Santos, like a true icon, now joins a very exclusive club. Only five other House members have ever been expelled. One was after being convicted of bribery. Another after being convicted of several felonies. And the other three was for treason because they literally fought for the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. And you might notice that unlike all those people, George Santos has not been convicted of any crime. What a travesty. At least not yet. Mm -hmm. And, And Santos commented on this earlier this week saying, I will be number six in the history, the first Republican and the only one without a conviction or without having committed treason. If the House wants to start different precedents and expel me, that is going to be the undoing of a lot of members of this body because this will haunt them in the future where mere allegations are sufficient to have members removed from office when duly elected by their people in their respective states and districts. And yeah, he has a point. To be fair though, he does also seem absolutely guilty as hell of many of the charges he has been charged with and will face trial for those sometime next year. And those charges, of course, include fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds, false statements, conspiracy, wire fraud, falsification of records, aggravated identity theft, and credit card fraud. It's 23 counts in total, and he's already had multiple people flip on him. So it's all but certain that he will be convicted of something once he has his day in court. But we don't know that yet. Innocent until proven guilty. And he hasn't been proven guilty yet, so that means... That means he's innocent. he's innocent. (laughs) (laughs) Ha ha! Until then, yeah, Santos is just one of many Americans out of a job. And, well, how is he taking it? In true George Santos fashion, if he is going to show up to his own funeral, he's going to do it in style. Show him the old razzle-dazzle. With even Twitter's resident male fashion expert, Derek Guy, remarking, he walked into this like a king. He also walked out like a king. You can add this photo here to your photos of George Santos that go hard folder. Yeah, he looks, uh, I mean, nothing's going to top the original one with the sunglasses, but yeah, yeah, I mean, bitch, I'm famous. Yeah. You can't take that away from him. He burned so bright. He burned out quickly, but only because he burned so bright. He did. Yeah. But as far as uh, what's on his mind, he didn't stick around for too much interaction with the press, but CNN did get him to share some of his thoughts. GOP Representative George Santos told CNN after the House voted to expel him that it's over. The House spoke, that's their vote. They just set new dangerous precedent for themselves, he added. 
When asked if he would still stay and use his non-member privileges because he is not convicted, Santos said, why would I want to stay here? To hell with this place. Woo! Pressed if he knew this was how it was going to go, Santos said, I had no skin in the game. And then he said, you know what? As unofficially no longer a member of Congress, I no longer have to answer your questions. Peace, bitch. Uh, He's so cool. He is the coolest, <laughs> coolest serving member of Congress. I fucking love this guy. <laughs> yeah. And like I said in the last episode, like he's probably committed fewer crimes in his year as a Congress member than any other year of his life. This was the best uh, that you could have asked for. Taking him away from his ability to do crimes publicly. Yeah, this was uh, like, you know, it's rehabilitative justice. And it like, really... You give someone a purpose and they no longer feel the need to commit crimes. And it really seems like he didn't enjoy his time. So this was like his personal prison. Because as you'll remember, there was a quote floating around when this ethics report came out that said, I didn't even want this job. Yeah, no, the scam was uh, you run for Congress in fucking New York. <laughs> and lose. As a Republican, yeah. you get a bunch of like idiots out in the Hamptons to send you money and then you lose and then you slink away like the thousands of other candidates for the House every two years. There's simply too many of them for the FEC to keep track of and uh, you go move on to your next grift well, feeling very cash heavy, yeah, instead, able to spend. Instead, he had to go work publicly uh, and have his entire life put under a microscope, yeah. a life that was one of the most interesting lives that anyone's ever lived. Yeah, way cooler than any of his haters. Yeah. I mean, come on. They're mm -hmm. just jealous. It's true. As for what's next for Santos between now and when he goes to federal prison, um, he hasn't said yet, but hopefully spilling lots and lots of tea. Twitch.tv, Santos. Oh my come God. On. I know you look like a gamer. Come on. Yeah. Maybe play some dating sims. Or just, just chatting. There's just chatting. Yeah. And you love money. People will, People will give you donate, money. Donate you money, yes. TikTok. I mean, just come on. Yeah. The shackles are off, George. Let it flow. But what's next for Santos's house seat is it's empty until a special election that will happen in February or March, depending on when New York Governor Kathy Hochul decides it will be. The Republicans still hold a majority in the House, but just by eight votes. And that could be seven votes, depending on how the people of Long Island vote. Though I'm not sure how these voters can even have faith in the democratic process after what's been done. No. It's shattered forever. Why would I do that? My vote obviously doesn't matter. No, I'm just going to vote for someone else and you're going to remove him because the uh, guy that me what I think doesn't matter. And all of my fellow citizens voted for, uh, you you kicked him out. So. Yeah. There you go. Anyways, enough about Democrats versus Republicans. Let's move on to the real conflict at the heart of this country, the war on Christmas. The primary conflict is, of course, between Christmas lovers and Christmas haters. Christmas lovers, Christmas haters. I love, I'm fine with it. I'm neutral. I'm Switzerland. Sure. And by Christmas haters, we're of course referring pretty much exclusively to just national retail brands that choose to go with a more subtle and inclusive Happy Holidays seasonal decor instead of putting pictures of the baby Jesus and Santa Claus all over their stores. But there's actually a second, less prominent war on Christmas, which is more of a civil war on Christmas between Christmas enjoyers who disagree on the relative importance of the baby Jesus and Santa Claus, and this week, over in Texas, the Civil War on Christmas produced some of the most absurd War on Christmas imagery we have ever seen. Here's Amarillo, Texas's ABC7 News. The Grinch tried to steal Christmas. Dressed as the Grinch, David Grisham carried a sign during the morning drop-off at Sleepy Hollow Elementary in Amarillo, Texas that read, Santa is fake. Jesus is real. Parents, as you might imagine, were not happy to see him. One dad grabbed the sign and threw it on the ground. Another parent told ABC7 News, Grisham shouldn't be pushing his agenda on people's kids. Police were called to the school, but they did not arrest the Grinch. APD said Grisham was lawfully on the sidewalk and was not breaking any laws. And yeah, that's, that's a man dressed head to toe as the Grinch. Not illegal to Grinch. Specifically, the Grinch as Santa variant, standing outside of an elementary school, holding a sign saying, Santa is fake, Jesus is real. Yeah, unfortunately, Santa deniers still walk among us, insisting that they have done their own research and found that it's not possible for one morbidly obese elderly man to deliver presents to all the world's children on Christmas Eve. And look, that's a self-fulfilling prophecy because the spirit is what keeps his yeah. sleigh moving. Yeah, you know, Santa's not real to you because he doesn't visit your house. That's right. He this, doesn't eat your cookies. This is a big conspiracy to keep Santa down because if you ruin the faith in Santa, 
He can't fly. Yeah. Some of the people out there, they even have the audacity to insist that the literal son of God came to earth and rose from the dead after being executed. So that's real and Santa's fake? <laughs> Crazy. Anyways, here's what the Grinch had to say for himself. ABC7 News asked Grisham if he understood why parents would be upset. I understand why they're upset, Grisham said. They're upset because they're prideful and don't want to admit that lying to their child is wrong in spite of what God's word says. They're more concerned with the traditions of men rather than the truth. And they double down on the lie because of pride. And they are angry because they want to blame the person telling the truth than the one who told the lie that prompted the truth to expose the lie. Mm. They don't want to be seen as a liar in the eyes of their child. But the facts say they are. ABC7 News also asked Grisham why he would choose to ruin the magic of Christmas <laughs> for kids. I'm not concerned about the magic of Christmas, but the miracle of Christmas in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, said Grisham. This guy has to be aware that, like, Jesus wasn't actually born on Christmas Day, right? Well, it's when we celebrate. Sure. I don't think that's important. Oh, oh, okay. Now who's splitting hairs? I don't know. Yeah. I, have no, I, have no, I have no Grinch in this fight. Okay, well, this guy, he, he obviously seems like a lot of fun. Yeah, invite this guy to all, all your parties. I mean, if he's portraying the Grinch, he's kind of doing a good job, I guess. Yeah. So, based on his Facebook, though, it looks like we'll be seeing a whole lot more of the Grinch in the coming weeks. The Grinch is going on the road. Oh, no. Preaching as the Grinch to kids at elementary schools was such a success out of the gate <laughs> that starting the first week of December, official street preachers hits the road to preach to kids in different parts of the country. Coming soon to an elementary school near to, you. To a street corner near you. <laughs> the Grinch holding up a sign about Jesus. And yeah, this guy's a street preacher. I'm pretty sure he has been to Comic-Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, With the little uh, microphone. Yeah. You, so close to the mouth, you can't even hear what they're saying anyway. Yeah. <laughs> they're all over the Glendale Galleria now for the holiday oh, shopping. Oh, are they? Yeah. Why? Because everyone's there for holiday shopping. Yeah? For Christmas shopping. So the, which is obviously not what they should I be I thought doing. you wanted us to be celebrating no, Christmas. get right to church. God, I hate this. Yeah. Anyways, further down on his Facebook, we find a totally normal and not in any way alarming post. A poem entitled, Santa is dead. Christ is alive. Which is 75% just the night before Christmas with a new ending where David Grisham uses castle doctrine to lawfully murder Santa Claus. As I drew a bead to fire and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed in all fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of jewelry he had flung on his back, and he looked like a thief just opening his pack. His eyes, how they glared. His arms, how hairy. His cheeks were all bruised. His nose honked like a fairy. His wicked little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the drool on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a cigarette <laughs> he held in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. I took sure aim and fired around in his little round belly that shook when hit like a bowl full of jelly. He tumbled into the wall and banged his head on a shelf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A dim of his eye and a twitch of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. I spoke not a word, but went straight to my phone to call the police to remove his dead bones. The police rang their cars to their team, gave a whistle, and away they all came like the down of a thistle. But I loudly exclaimed as cops drove into sight, Santa is dead, but Christ is alive. Bars. You got to hand it to him. Bars. I mean, yeah, I guess, I mean, the, the castle doctrine and Americans' fascination with uh, wanting to legally, murder, legally someone. murder someone, that does somewhat fly in the face of the, the, Santa, the Santa story. But I'm sure he's got ways around that. Yeah. He sprinkles some little fairy dust on you so you, you're passed out. Yeah. When, when he shows up. Well, it's it, look, it's all very exciting to know that this person will be spending the next few weeks traveling the country from elementary school to elementary school. Um, this would be all fine and good if the Grinch limited his anti-Santa activism to Facebook. But his his anti-Santaism. It's mm -hmm. on the rise. Anti-Santaism is, uh, is at levels previously unseen since the 1930s. Big threat. Uh, but this is a nation of Santa enjoyers, uh, religious or not. Yeah. And with the way protesters are already treated in this country, he is just asking for trouble. And trouble might find him. He might get on the naughty list. 
But uh, let's move on now to another weirdo who, unlike the Grinch and unlike George Santos, has managed to be a weirdo in a way that hurts nobody. The Wall Street Journal this week profiled a man in Brazil named Ivanio Batista da Silva, who decided that what he wanted in life was to be a king. And a king needs a castle. So he built one. From their reporting, Once upon a time in a land far away, there lived a shoeshine boy who planned to become king. No one believed him. After all, he lived in Brazil, a presidential republic, and more specifically, in Cubatao, a dismal industrial town that was so polluted it was nicknamed the Valley of Death. But some 50 years later, Ivanio Batista da Silva, now better known as His Majesty Ivan I of Cubatao, has proved them wrong. After making a small fortune disposing of factories' waste following a 1990s era government cleanup, Silva built himself a castle on the edge of the city's mangrove swamps, complete with turrets, chandeliers, and ornate golden columns. Replica brass lions stand guard over his velvet throne, swords, and an improvised art collection that includes 32 framed photocopies of the world's most famous paintings. People always say they want to live like a king, but they don't actually do anything about it. Well, I did, says Silva, 59, his red cloak billowing behind him as he strides to the window, pointing out a group of fans in his front yard. Uh, cool. This is like King Ludwig all over again. Who's King Ludwig? He built uh, Norschweinstein. Oh. The Mad King. I mean, he was at least a member of the aristocracy. Sure. This dude's just a guy <laughs> in Brazil. Yeah. Well, look, there he is, the king himself. And he's right. Plenty of people have the means to live like a king and simply choose not to. They say stuff like, a medieval castle would look absolutely ridiculous in this town. <laughs> but His Majesty Ivan, like a true king, built one anyway. The article points out that there actually is a movement in Brazil to reinstate the monarchy, but Ivan isn't really interested in ruling. He just wants to live like a king. Yeah. Me? I just like gold things, says Silva, explaining his obsession. The monarchists tried to get him to join their cause, but were aghast to find out he was a socialist, he says with a chuckle. Silva began work on his castle 15 years ago, designing ever more extravagant additions to his house with the help of some baffled workmen. I didn't need an engineer, he says. Silva explains that he had experience in large-scale construction after overseeing the production of carnival floats as, he, as head of a samba school. Okay, that's the same thing. Yeah, uh, when the first turret went up, Everyone made fun of us, says Gustavo Silva, his 24-year-old son, who helps his dad show off his castle on TikTok. But now we're a tourist attraction. Do you see what's possible in places that don't have OSHA? Yeah. You can just turn your house into a castle using only the expertise you've learned from making uh, carnival floats yeah. for your samba school. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you could never do this in California. Gavin Newsom would never let you. <laughs> You'd have to pull so many permits. Yeah, take a long time. And yeah, we're just going to read a, a bit more from this article because uh, this guy rules. Not everyone is a fan of Silva's castle. It just all seems, you know, a bit over the top, says Maria Claudette Silva, his wife, <laughs> questioning his latest projects to build a 60-foot-long dragon on the roof. Honestly, nothing surprises me anymore, she says. After 30 years of marriage, though, she has adopted a stoic approach. He sits on his throne with his sword in one hand and a beer in the other and leaves me in peace, <laughs> she says, noting that the only rule is that he leave the kitchen alone. Others are less kind. Silva says he has received hate mail complaining of historical inaccuracies built into the <laughs> castle's design. Who cares? Which he admits was broadly inspired by the Palace of Versailles, Russian castles, and Harry Potter. <laughs> but Silva says he has worked too long and hard to care about what people think. He revels in the incongruity of it all. Ever eccentric, he likes to drink Heineken from his family's china and named his German shepherd guard dogs after Greek gods. He plans to decorate one turret with memorabilia from Disney's Aladdin and turn another into a toilet. Dudes rock. This, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I, I love every time you hear something about this, like it, there, it's either a guy that's divorced or a guy whose wife is just like, fine, Whatever. <laughs> as long as you leave me the hell out of this yeah. and don't make us go bankrupt. Uh. Look, he is, uh, you get one spin on this earth. Yeah. And he is choosing to live life to the fullest. Born too late to live in a castle? I don't think so. Not for Mr. De Silva. Yeah. This castle looks insane. It just, it's... Yeah, maybe it's less King Ludwig and more uh, the Winchester house. Um, again, though, the Winchester lady had money. Yeah. This guy, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like a, it looks like a sort of, Carnival display, which yeah. makes sense because that's his uh, the extent of his engineering background. But uh, I love the I love the idea of someone writing to him to complain of inaccuracies. Yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you, 
You Buddy. Live, you live in a town called the Valley of Death. Yeah. Enjoy, the, enjoy the castle. So yeah, he's living the dream. And it's just so nice to see a Brazilian man thriving after what happened to George Santos. Yeah, I needed this. I was feeling really bad for the uh, Brazilian guy population mm-hmm. out there. They needed a win, and I, I'm glad that one. King Ivan the first could, could bring that W. Yeah. But moving on now to one more bit of international news. Over in England, one little boy has had enough of the discrimination that he's faced for years thanks to the nerd emoji. And that's, of course, the emoji that depicts a round cartoon face wearing thick-rimmed glasses while giving a buck tooth smile. It's used pretty much exclusively as a diss, and this little boy is sick and tired of it. Probably thanks mostly to the fact that he looks exactly like the nerd emoji. And we're sorry, kid, but it's true yeah. in the... Holding up the photo right I mean, next to your yeah, face. You shouldn't have done that. That's you're just inviting, mm. inviting. Sorry, kid. Critique. Why does everyone keep saying that this? Stop sending me this. I can't. They're the same picture. Can't I tell. I cannot apart. tell the difference. Here's the BBC. A boy has started a petition asking Apple to change its offensive and insulting glasses emoji. Teddy, ten, from Peppered Oxfordshire, believes the icon with its prominent front teeth gives the wrong impression of people who wear glasses. The proud specs wearer has redesigned the emoji, substituting the toothy grin with a small smile. He told the BBC, We want to change this. Apple are making it absolutely horrible for people wearing glasses. Teddy added, They're making people think we're nerds, and it's absolutely horrible. It's making me feel sad and upset. And if I find it offensive, there will be thousands of people around the world that find it offensive too. Teddy has called his own revamp of the icon, which is often colloquially referred to as the nerd emoji, as the genius emoji, (laughs) and hopes the tech company will adopt it. It's got thin lenses and thin frames, and then it's got a little smiley face instead of the horrible rabbit teeth, he explained. I like wearing glasses because they make me see a lot better, and they look good and stylish. Listen, Ted, you you got moxie, kid. You, You seem like a pretty cool kid. We admire your ambitiousness, but facts are facts, and you kind of look no, you look exactly like the nerd emoji. Like, it's uncanny. Also, I want to add that, like, just reducing the buck teeth, not going to help it. Also, because you're from England, like, that could also be a knock on British people yeah, in general. Yeah, you all have bad teeth. Yeah. The, the opinions <laughs> you're expressing are not the opinions of the world's millions of glasses wearers. They are the opinions of a person who bears a comically striking resemblance to an emoji. <laughs> there are, oh, I bet everyone with glasses is uh, so pissed off about this. Also, no, this, Teddy. this kid probably is a nerd and uh, is only inviting even more bullying yeah, this by is calling like, it to everyone's attention. This is like rule number one of being bullied is don't give them a reason. Yeah, drawing <laughs> the most amount of attention to yourself. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> look, the, the point is you'll grow out of it eventually, probably pretty soon. Yeah, you're 10. You'll Kids be, are always changing. In like five years, you'll be 15. Also, just embrace the nerd. Yeah, there's nothing shameful about it. No, it's actually, you're the one that's mis, uh, misrepresenting this, yeah, what it means. Yeah, I mean, it's nerds make the most money these days. It's so funny that, like, all of Teddy's friends, they were sending that earnestly. They were like, that's all Teddy, the smartest kid yeah, in the class. It's so cool that our, our friend Teddy, who rules, has his own emoji. <laughs> yeah, we send it to him all the time. That looks exactly like If it. I had an emoji that looked like me, I'd be, I would be yeah. happy that people were sending it you all the time. You should be happy that you have your own emoji. Yeah, and he just took it the wrong way. But yeah, at some point in your life, when some pedantic dickhead tries to well actually you on the internet, you are Teddy. You're going to be glad that the nerd emoji is there for yeah. you to make use of. You're gonna you're gonna think to yourself, "Why did I ever try to make Apple get rid of this? This emoji is incredibly useful." And if a couple children are bullied, I mean that's a totally fair exchange for being able to reply to dipshits on the internet with just the nerd emoji. I, Teddy, was wrong. Being a dork isn't about what you look like; it's a state of mind. I like to assume that he, in order to not Use this emoji, went into uh, Apple's Memoji creator and created his, you know, because you can do your own face. No, he it, drew it by hand. It looks like shit, too. Sorry, Teddy. No, but like if you go into the one that like makes you look like a 3D generated version oh. of that, it, it would probably like he put in all of his stuff and then it just gave him back the nerd emoji again. They're like, sorry, you look, I, it, we can't do any better yeah, than sorry. what's already been produced. This this uh, function is only for human faces. <laughs> you can't you can't do it to Why our won't own face emojis? ID work on me? It keeps telling me that I'm an emoji. It's Fucking weird. Anyways, we do have more news for you coming up in the headlines half of the show. But first, we got to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Factor. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. 
Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, you'll eat well, and you'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all of your holiday to-dos. Too busy with holiday plans to cook but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality that you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. I had barramundi last night. Ooh, barramundi. Skip the stress of meal prepping over the holidays with Factor. Choose from 35 plus weekly flavor packed, fresh, never frozen meals that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, all delivered right to your door and ready to eat in two minutes. Looking for special occasion meals during the holidays? Level up with Gourmet Plus options prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Enjoy premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, asparagus, baramundi. And when you're too busy running around to plan lunch, Factor has you covered with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Looking for calorie conscious options over the holidays that also taste great? Try delicious, dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. This December, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor packed meals delivered right to your door. Ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash weeklyweird50 and use code weeklyweird50 to get 50% off. That is code weeklyweird50 at factormeals.com slash weeklyweird50 to get 50% off. And now it's time for the headlines half of the show. The weirdest, funniest, yeah. best headlines. Most from around amazing the world. headlines. You're starting, gonna love them. Starting with this one from over in uh, Northern Ireland. Mm. Lawmaker unleashes on gray squirrels. The Hamas of the squirrel world. When you joked earlier in the week that uh, Hamas would be used as a general term like COVID for ev- an excuse for everything. Yeah. Hamas. Uh, I mean, this is a slightly different. This is just describing things yeah. as Hamas. Mm-hmm. I mean, they do have a Slight point. I mean, obviously, this is this is the Northern Ireland uh, Parliament, which is illegitimate uh, <laughs> yeah. and cannot be, you know, uh, taken seriously. But they True. they do, despite that, raise a decent point. Uh, I I didn't know that our our squirrels, the gray squirrel is a that's America's squirrel, or specifically the East Coast squirrel. Cool. And somehow they got over. They somehow they got out. Yeah. Who who's whose fault is that? Not ours. It's the same with like like raccoons are a big fucking problem in Central Europe. I'm like, how how did that fucking happen? They're not from there. Why'd you bring, why did you choose? Anyway, yeah, I guess uh, the gray squirrels are squirrels, which are, of course, better. Yeah. Have, uh, they're invasive over there. They're, they're, they're putting the uh, European red squirrel out of business because like all Americans, they're just, you know, they have initiative. They have that entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. Never stop working. Um, but yeah. That they, grind set, hustle and grind that's set. What I, that's what I would compare them to. Yeah. They're like Americans. They're the, they're the Americans of the squirrel world, but. Uh, fat. To these politicians, uh, <laughs> they're the Hamas of the squirrel world. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I don't think that's fair. Kelly Osborne says her mom once pooped in her dad Ozzy Osbourne's weed to stop him from smoking. Okay. Huh. That seems like a very weird tactic. Yeah. They, I think they have that podcast or whatever. They're spilling all the family dirt. I guess mm-hmm. this is something that uh, they did repeatedly. Wow. Sharon did not like Ozzy doing drugs or anything, mm-hmm. at least once they had kids. And uh, she Why not hide to... it, though, instead of pooping in it? I don't know, because this, this is more passive aggressive. Sure. So, yeah, she'd find him, and then she'd just, like, poop in the bag and put it back where it was. And then Ozzy would find it, but, ah, ah, there's poop in my bag, Sharon! But also, you're Ozzy Osbourne. Like, that shouldn't gross you out. You've done so much grosser things. Mm-hmm. Just smoke the poop. My, maybe that's what he started doing. Sharon, there's no poop in my weed. Please. Sharon, I need the poop. I need a deposit, Sharon. Please. I've grown accustomed to it. Yeah, also, it's like, Sharon, like, yeah, I mean, obviously, you don't want your, you don't want Ozzy Osbourne doing, like, hard drugs yeah. in his 70s. Mm-hmm. But a little bit of weed? Come on. Come on! Yeah. The man is clearly in pain all the time. Just yeah, look at him. the, the one good thing he has. <laughs> <laughs> Let Ozzy have some fucking weed. My goodness. Attorney suspended for pooping in a Pringles can, leaving it in victim advocate's parking lot. Was this a I have to go situation and this is the perfect little uh So according to portable him portable toilet? According to the lawyer, he's like, no, that's just, you know, sometimes my poop I poop in a Pringles can. It's a great receptacle, and then I toss it. Um, but 
uh, I guess the the place he tossed that Pringles poop can this time was at the offices of uh, the, uh, the attorneys for the case he was on his way to drive to. It a seemed, simple mistake. It seems like a little a uh, little bit of a coincidence. Mm. Um, also, this guy's a defense attorney for like like criminals, like violent criminals, and some uh, Saul Goodman shit. Uh, even more than that, and mm. uh, yeah, just harassing, like literal like victims advocates. So, yeah, it sounds uh, yeah. bad. Uh, it doesn't sound like an accident in that case. No. But I do love the idea of having a poop can in the car just in case you need it. It is weird, though. because like, like keeping Gatorade bottles. Because that, to be discovered, like someone would have to see just a random Pringles can and open on the up. ground and be like, oh, maybe there's some chips in there still. Oh, Jesus, well, duty. Uh, Ozzy's like, oh, please, you <laughs> save some of that for me. Uh, no, the it, it is, first of all, yes, odd. But also, maybe that's like a, uh, they just know that about this lawyer. Oh. oh, dude! If you need, if you know that he's been around and you see a Pringles can, walk the other way. Yeah, it could be. Well, anyway, he's been suspended from practicing law, so hope is worth it. It it probably wasn't, but uh, <laughs> I hope you like pooping in Pringles cans because that's what you're going to be doing from now on, Mister yeah. Lawyer. Yeah. A steady stream of pee is eroding Baltimore's historic buildings. And this is, I guess, this is happening to every city in the world. Mm. I, I think it's it's like the biggest problem facing Cologne Cathedral. Oh, wow. The, the biggest church in the world, I believe. Uh, well, if, it, if it starts corroding on the bottom, the whole thing will top over. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess in Europe, they, they figured out some solutions. I think we talked about it a few years ago, but it's like some hydrophobic coating that like yeah, repels like, the piss. They put it on those shoes and then they put yeah. like uh, chocolate syrup all over them. It, it like off. splashes back. Yeah. But also it's like, I mean, at least in Europe, they have those public urinals. Yeah. Those are great. America has nothing. Yeah. Like, this, we'll talk about uh, Ron DeSantis and his poop map in a second, but it's just like, okay, if you don't like people pissing and shitting everywhere, well, there's an easy solution to that. That would cut down on public pissing and shitting a whole lot, is if people could actually go to the bathroom. Like, this isn't just a fucking homeless people problem. This is everyone who drives for, like, any delivery company is like, no, you literally, you can't go to There's the bathroom. There's no such thing There's as public no, Yeah, they, they do not exist anymore. Yeah. So we just shit in the car and we throw it out the window. Yeah, and like in a major city. I've seen, I think in this city, with millions of residents, I've seen two of those public self-washing toilets. Ever. Yeah, which are like so extra. It's like it doesn't need to be like that crazy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, those things are cool. They have some interesting features, but it's like they, they're very expensive, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just weird. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, even just do it like they do in Europe where you have an old lady sitting there and you have to give her like a quarter. Yeah. And that way it stays clean. Yeah. And, and (laughs) and specifically like urinals that come straight out of the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the public like urinals, uh, you see this, especially in places like Amsterdam and Hamburg, like places where people are drinking a lot. London, yeah. But it's just like, it's just a row of urinals with like three walls around it. And you can't do that in America because then everyone would be considered a sex offender. I guess. If you're pissing in public at all, even if it's in a urinal, it's like, oh, geez. Look at this. Look at this pervert. Exactly. We're so fucking weird over here. (sighs) Anyways, these magnificent purple and green lights aren't auroras. This is Steve. (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah, so I guess there's a different, you know, the aurora borealis, and then there's the the southern one. But uh, I guess... Steve borealis? uh, Well, these astronomers, they discovered something that looks similar to an aurora, but, like, technically isn't. Mm -hmm. It happens, like, a little farther away from the poles. And uh, they realized, like, it didn't have a name. And so they were, like, debating for years in, like, their online forums. And finally, one of them's like, look, we're going to be here for the rest of our lives debating this. Why don't we just... How about we just call it Steve for now? And we can get back to doing our jobs. And uh, they just never came up with a new name for it. Cool. So uh, yeah, that's Steve up in the air. It does look pretty cool. Yeah. But now I'm questioning the one time I did see the Aurora Borealis, if it was just Steve instead. It might have been. I thought I saw the Aurora. It's just Steve. Just Steve. Man arrested for indecent exposure at Come and Go says he was just scratching his genitals. This is what I'm saying. You can't even scratch your genitals anymore. I mean, it sounds like he's <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. making an excuse. Yeah. I I was first exposed to the exposed to the existence of come and go like a year ago. I've I'd never they heard of this. They have them in place. Georgia. 
Yeah, it's like a southern chain. Yeah. Like, that name is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Like, whose idea was that? Come and go. I, especially, like, the, the weird spelling of it. Yeah. Yeah. It, you're just asking for people to come do some degenerate sexual shit yeah. at your gas station. Uh-huh. Come. You, this you, guy was trying to come, and then he was going to go. Yeah. He's oh, I didn't know. Way. Oh, you're not allowed to come and go? The come and go? Come on. Yeah, you're, you're, you're forcing people to have unpure thoughts when they pull in for a simple tank of gas. Yeah. Hmm. I was here for gas, but now I'm thinking about cum. Literally, you cannot pass one of those without thinking about semen. <laughs> it's impossible. It's true. It's true. That's kind of on them. It is. Especially when you spell it like that. This man is innocent. Uh-huh. You're free to go. Ron DeSantis' poop map during Gavin Newsom debate brutally mocked. That's like, what, four poop stories? Anyway, uh, Lots yeah. Of poop. I still... I, 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 he carries this around uh, with him at all times. Yeah, it's his lucky poop map. Yeah. I, I've only seen clips from this debate, this pointless debate between a man running for president and a man just Who's who happens to be the governor of California. I guess we're just like doing a my dad could beat up your dad thing with governors now. That's mm -hmm. what politics in this country is. Yes. But uh, yeah, Ron pulled a fucking map out of his pocket. It's like back of San Francisco, all brown on it. He's like, you know what that is? That's poop. That's all the times people have found poop. And people were like, what? <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not denying there's probably a lot of poop on the ground in San Francisco, but yeah. like Again, toilets. Add some toilets. You solve baby. it with toilets. Yup. Adds like, I don't know. Uh, it. I'm sure there's poop on the ground in Florida, as well. There certainly is. I took a big dump right in the middle of the sidewalk when I was on my uh, one of my walks. See. Yeah. There Step you go. In that. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, checkmate, Ron DeSantis. I never. Who will never be president? This man, like, so like, I mean, he's cooked. If this debate served any purpose, it was just like seeing how Ron DeSantis would do in a actual presidential debate. And uh, I'd say not too good. No, he, he, uh, way out of his comfort zone. Yeah, he's just not a public speaker. He still hasn't figured out how to smile properly or like how he long to do it. He so hard. Like he'll, he'll, you'll see him just really trying to force the smile and he gets it, he holds it for about two seconds and then it's just <laughs> closed. And then he's mm -hmm. back to scowling. Yeah. So there's that. Paraguay official resigns after signing agreement with fictional country. What? This keeps happening. They, they, I guess there's a... I, I love fake countries. But there's, there's one in India, some guru or whatever, and uh, he has been very successful at sending his representatives out to like various countries mm -hmm. and actually getting meetings with them. And in this case, even getting the Paraguayan government to sign a document saying like that they would help get this country admitted to the yeah. UN and shit. Very embarrassing. This is uh, this is the kind of stuff that uh, that Ramona Dudulo or whatever in Canada yeah. needs to step up needs to step up the game and start like bridging the gap with sister cities, mm -hmm. sister countries. She got kicked out, or they they finally left that school that they were oh that's good at for like a couple months. Mm -hmm. They went like a mile away. They, they just like went all, right outside the city. They limit. should all dress like the Grinch and do a school tour in Canada. I want them to stay as far away from just the rest of humanity as possible. That would be the Go one. up to the Yukon. You can, you can claim the Yukon is... If, uh, take it. It's yours. Humiliating. McCarthy visited Mar-a-Lago because depressed Trump wasn't eating, Cheney says. Yeah, this is from the new Liz Cheney book. Yeah. The, the Trump books somehow keep coming. There's mm -hmm. got to be hundreds at this point. I feel like the publishers are just, like, timing them at this point. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, she's, she wrote her book, and, yeah, she said that Kevin McCarthy after January 6th and Trump, I guess Trump really thought that it would work. It didn't. So Kevin, Kevin paid a little visit down to Mar-a-Lago because he's like, they say he's doing really bad. They say he, he's not eating. He's just, he's in a, he's depressed. I know what'll cheer him up. Uh, being his whipping boy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go down there and let him make fun of me for a while. It is just, it's just very funny to picture Trump like legitimately sad. Yeah. It's like the flip of that picture of Mitt Romney eating with Trump. Yeah. How did I get into this mess? Oh, man. I just wanted to be rich and do whatever I want. I, all like, I wanted to do was a coup. Yeah. Come on. You can't even do coups anymore. Nope. And final headline. Pew Research Center is tired of blaming Gen Z and millennials for everything. It's retiring the whole concept of generational framing. A sad, sad day. Finally. No, it was, it was Gen Alpha's turn to no. start getting... So that's a very generational thing of you to do. To yeah, be exactly. like, my generation had to suffer being blamed for fucking everything. And now 
the next generation has to as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, I didn't realize how much Pew in particular was responsible for all this because they, you know, they, they just run a, they run polls on fucking everything. They're yeah. a polling company. And, you know, they, they release the actual polling data, but no one wants to read that. It's just, it's boring. It's a bunch of graphs and shit. So they release press releases around it. And they, for years, have just taken, like, one little bit of, like, uh, age gap difference and just made that, like, the headline of it. Yeah, because it gets all it, the views. It, it get, yeah. That gets immediately picked up by all the, like, less reputable uh, outlets, New York Post and Daily Mail and all that, who just, like, free content. Let's take it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they were just like, yeah, I mean, it was great for clicks, but, like, it's really not all that statistically relevant. Yeah. Um, it like, might have also uh, <laughs> not helped so much with the yeah. uh, the generational war that seems to be being waged. Yeah. So. Um, because, yeah, for the past 10 years, if you're a boomer, you pretty much assume that anything that bad that happens is the result of millennials. These woke millennials. Anything that you used to love, like... Uh, 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 you know, you know who ruined lawn darts? Those damn millennials. They went all the way back to the '70s, mm -hmm. and uh, they started throwing them at people. Millennials made it illegal to drink from the hose. Yeah, they did. Because they're too, they're too woke. They got participation trophies. Nobody talked about slot car racing anymore. Uh, <laughs> the, are those the ones you put a little coin in, or what am I? No, thinking? no, no. It's uh, it's like uh, it's like the the uh, it's like the where you'd put the cars on the track and squeeze the trigger, yeah. but like bigger and faster. It was oh, something that, yeah, those was something cool. that the children, of, the what boomers were really into. The millennials killed it. They Nobody was going to slot car tracks anymore. Wow. The damn millennials. Yeah. What's another old person thing that uh, hasn't been around before millennials, but they... Polio. Uh, millennials ruined polio. Yeah. Yeah, it's really sad. I, I'm uh, very upset that millennials uh, got Richard Nixon... Uh, <laughs> they canceled Richard Nixon. Yeah, they canceled him. They got him impeached. Now they're canceling Henry Kissinger. Mm -hmm. For what? Yeah. Some genocides? Grow up. Anyways, uh, that's good news for Gen Alpha, also known as the last generation. The final generation. They won't, Gen, Gen Omega. Mm -hmm. They won't have to deal with any of the blame because the world is already ruined. Yeah. They can't. That's the reason. There's no coming back from what, yeah. the irreparable damage. Millennials killed everything, yeah. so there's nothing left to kill. Yep. We did it. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. We will, of course, be back next week. In the meantime, make sure you like the video, comment down below, reply to a comment, click the join button, turn on the bell, do all those wonderful Please. things that we love you for, and then watch our most recent videos. We have just, if you want a roundup of everything happened this week, we got an Elon roundup. We have the George Santos roundup, which like the day that led up to his expulsion was where the real fireworks happened, his final casting call. Mm -hmm. And uh, check both of those out. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.